let's start with Japan for a second. We're going to start with the good stuff. Um, Japan's market is partying like it's 1989. Not quite the Prince song. The Nikkei hitting highs we haven't seen since then. What is the prime minister's plans to combat deflation and also uh, combat low growth? What does that mean for investors? It's something that he calls a new economic stage. Well, he's, they're really uh, moving out of the deflation stage, right? For decades, we had deflation. The currency is now down. They have a massive fiscal stimulus. And that's giving investors hope that we're kind of uh, escaping that deflationary trap. But we had a strong start to the year, but the year is not over yet. It's early days, so we have to be careful about extrapolating these gains a little bit too much because fundamentally this is still an economy where real incomes are down because mm -hmm. inflation is so high, right? You have uh, still a shrinking population. You have enormous headwinds. And some of the gains from the uh, depreciating of the currency is kind of behind us. That's in the price okay. already. Um, a lot of bullishness when it comes to Japan. We've had a lot of guests talk about it. And, of course, Warren Buffett last year making some big investments there. Um, when you say that we have to be realistic about the gains going forward in the short term, is this a good place to put money? Um, I, I think you have to be a bit uh, tactical here. You have to be a bit uh, careful. Um, we have seen enormous gains of Brazil in Japan. Right. Uh, we've seen investors shifting a little bit out of China into Japan, into India. But a lot of these movements have already occurred. So I think we shouldn't overinterpret the signals that we see at the beginning of the year. You mentioned 8% up already this yeah. year. As I said, it's still early days, and so it fades some of those gains a little bit. All right, let's go to China. Let's interpret some of that. Um, despite a number of stimulus measures, Chinese equities, they're moving lower. I think the real question here, are we approaching a point where Chinese equities are just uninvestable? I, I know this, this term is thrown around quite a bit, but we have to keep this <laughs> Is this some TV stuff we yes. just throw it around? <laughs> no, well, it's just like, you know, you, you, know, you have, it's one of the, largest markets in the world. There's tremendously right. good companies. Uh, you can have alpha generation. You can find small companies that are growing rapidly. So it's still a very investable market. In the aggregate, it's right. There are two things now which are right now a problem. One is that we see, of course, some unwinding of structures, which is weighing in near term in the market. We saw that this week. But you had actually today, for example, foreign investors being net buyers of, of equity. So it's not all bad, right? In fact, right. Last, year, uh, last week, we saw three days where global macro funds, for example, going back into the market because the valuations are so compelling. And unless you think China is going to disappear, uh, there are some compelling stories there in China. I, I like that you came here to straighten this out. You're like, slow down on Japan, <laughs> slow down on China. You're going too far in both directions. So I think the real question is, it, it's investable. So we're getting ahead of ourselves. It's something we're throwing out. Are there certain sectors? I, I would think the property sector is not one area you'd want to invest in. But what about tech? Are there other areas when it comes to China that you see as having the best opportunities for investors? So, so tech, of course, is a key, key priority of the government. That's still where we see a lot of opportunities. Uh, if you look at, for example, the pharma sector, biotech, healthcare, it's an aging population. Mm -hmm. And you have actually enormous progress in the pharmaceutical sector in China. So services, uh, healthcare, for example, and then also the green energy space, uh, electric vehicles, so it's still doing very, very well as well.